Hello, everyone, and welcome this Safer Internet Day, February 6th, 2024. Where are the months going? I have a number of partners in crime tonight. I have Leanne from Trend Micro, colleague and uh, co-worker and uh, also parent. And then I have Ray and Ella who are signing uh, tonight. And we will also, um, you will, when I'm sharing my slides, you will see either Ray or Ella, but you will hear me more than likely when I share some slides. The minutes are like seconds here today. It's been so busy on Safer Internet Day. We had workshops with kids in this morning and teens. And um, we announced the winners of our video competition who are from Ballyhaig in County Kerry and from Meath as well, the King family. So a lot of activity today to celebrate Safer Internet Day. Uh, some of you may have heard this morning on the news research from CyberSafe Kids that 2,900 parents were interviewed and surveyed and a quarter of children aged six have and own their own smartphone. And it caused a lot of conversations and provoked a lot of debate today. And um, it is scary, Emma, it is very scary. And while I'd love to think that these are completely locked down devices with all the safety settings and the parent is beside them all the time, we don't know. But all we can do here tonight is provide you with the information that you need. And thank you for joining the information that you need. And you won't always know all the answers, but you know where to go to get the information uh, to protect your children. And as parents, our job is to safeguard our kids, they, their safety, their privacy, their security, offline and online. And with what I'm, we're going to talk about tonight, it's about managing that screen time and the challenges as kids get older, okay? So even if we look, first of all, at screen time, screen time, the actual word itself has come from, you know, the telly years ago. That's, it was always about time on the telly and, and you know, that's all we had. And today, if you look at screen time and if we try to define screen time, it's a very gray area because, you know, kids can be using, you know, their Kindle, listening to music. They can be using a Fitbit. They can be doing their homework. They could be researching something that's really important to them. Or they could be improving their swimming skills or learning guitar or, you know, whatever it is that, that they love doing. And then you've got social, gaming, coding, creating websites. There's so much good stuff out there. But obviously, with the good stuff, there is also what we need to be conscious of, the risks with the Internet and everything online. And it's about striking that balance and being aware of that as well. But the screen time is a very gray area and we need to focus on quality time online as opposed to how much time is my child supposed to be online every day? Because it's like, if you get the answer, you will then be able to give the rule to your child. And it's just not that straightforward anymore. So um, let's start with that screen time. We don't want it to be like the forbidden fruit where they're begging for five more minutes every 15 minutes. You know, we want it to be a healthy part of their daily diet, depending on their age. And um, that's something that we need to be conscious of. So that's screen time, defining screen time. I did a talk several years ago with a consultant child and adolescent psychiatrist, Dr. Michelle Mulcahy, and we co-presented on Internet safety. And she spoke the entire time that she had to present on sleep. And it has resonated with me ever since because she talked about the importance of sleep and the impact of lack of sleep. And, you know, we all know the basics. You know, if you don't sleep, your if your child doesn't sleep properly and get enough hours sleep, they're going to be moody in the morning. They're going to have poor diet, craving sugar. If they're anxious or worried at any point during the day, their anxiety is heightened because of their lack of sleep. You know, so all of that combined with concentration, won't be better, won't be 
okay, because that will be impacted as well by lack of sleep. So having young people on devices late at night, for example, is something that we need to be conscious of. And the best way to do this is to have that conversation with kids always and from a young age. OK, so I just wanted to mention what Dr. Mulcahy said. Sleep, 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 sleep is what she talked about. And I did the Internet safety piece. And I think there, you know, it's very, very important to be aware of that. And then, you know, we also need to look at ourselves. What is my relationship with my device like? You know, am I on it morning to night? Am I rarely on it? When do I use it? For how long? Because your children are watching you and they will emulate what they see. And then we need to look at our parenting style. You know, some parents will not allow their children and are not happy for that to happen, that they don't get a device till they're a specific age. It could be eight, 12, 13, tablet or mobile device, or it could be, you know, younger age. Are you the parent that's always on this gaming with your kids? You're on the whatever apps they're on, you're on it with them. Are you kind of growing up with the apps together or are you not so involved in technology? And it's to be conscious of that as well, because if you think about that, 25 percent of children at the age of six own their own smartphone. You know, this is something that we need to be conscious of. Are we aware of what's in those devices for those kids, what we're giving to them, our own parenting style, our own information and knowledge about the technology we we're handing over? It's up to us as parents to make sure we're aware and we know that in order to protect our kids. And that's what tonight's all about. And anything I talk about, we will share links during the chat for you. And then afterwards, any resources I talk about, they will be shared out to you in email afterwards as well. So you don't feel like you have to be remembering things. OK, it'll all be shared out afterwards and this is being recorded. OK, um, so practical ways to support your child. There is no magic technical solution to support and manage your child's screen time. And, you know, whether your child is not 18 months or between two and six or six to nine, or a teen, a tween or a teen, they're developing themselves as children. And, you know, by the time they get to their teenage years, they're very, very conscious of themselves, their own, they're aware of themselves and other people and how they're perceived. And they're very self-conscious and they're rebelling, they're expressing. And, you know, though all the different ages that you have, there's different developmental milestones for those children. And with that, the screen time and devices in general need to be almost built to complement them as best you know how, as best you know your child, you know. So um, practical ways to support your child is what we're going to talk about. And, you know, some really I guess that when you finish this webinar tonight, that you will have the confidence and feel more empowered, like all of the webinars that we do here at Trend Micro, that you feel empowered and know where to go when you need help, because we don't always know all of the answers. OK. All right. So uh, I'm going to start sharing my slides now. And, you know, I, I talked about quality time online and not getting hung up on the how many hours a day for my five year old, for my nine year old, for my 13 year old. It's about digital wellness and it's part of all our lives. And we need to ensure our children learn to have it become part of their lives, too. So for the next, let's see how much time I have left. Forty five minutes. Useful research. Just a couple of in, just a couple of slides and graphs just to show you the research that's being done with the Digital Wellness Lab. And uh, Dr. Michael Rich is a pediatrician and he also calls himself a mediatrician. And 
he has done a lot of work with children and a lot of work with devices and studies and the research is the Digital Wellness Lab and we have those links and we'll share the research out as we go through it. I'm going to talk to you about screen time tools. What are screen time tools? How do they work? I'm going to show you demonstrations of if you have Android devices or iOS, what do they actually look like to set up and what can they actually do? And can they really help? And I can tell you myself, I've used them with my own kids from a young age and it has really helped as they got older that they understood that, the importance and the value of it in their daily lives. I'm also going to share with you TikTok screen time. And I have Snapchat and YouTube in blue because that's for the Q&A if you want me to show it to you. Just being conscious of time, I feel it's important to just, let's just leave that and get straight into the Q&A. If you want me to show you managing screen time on Snapchat and on YouTube, I will show you on the demonstration, those demonst during the um, during the Q&A time, okay? Limiting screen time, restricting inappropriate content, setting up reports, setting up breaks, turning off notifications, we we'll go through that, okay? And some useful resources, which my colleague Leanne will share as well with you, all right? Okay, so I've said this probably on every single webinar that I've attended and hosted. The relationship with your child. Trend Micro is a global cybersecurity company now in business for over 35 years. And our number one piece of advice to parents everywhere is the importance of the relationship with your child, conversation with your child, listening, building trust, being there for them. That is the most important thing. Coming in number two number, at second place is tech tools. The role of tech tools are there to support you and complement you as a parent or guardian or teacher. Managing your child's time online, okay? So there is no tech tool that will ever replace the role of a parent. So starting on the relationship side, we're going to talk about these things that, you know, this is from the Digital Wellness Lab, a pulse survey for 13 to 17 year olds. My parents' rules around media use are so they're strict, they're reasonable, they're beneficial. And the reason I'm showing you this is to show you that if your child is four, five, six, seven, eight, under 10 years of age, look at this. Teenagers know and understand. Like you've got 70% of them that agree that parent rules around me use, my online usage, they're reasonable and they're beneficial to me because they know that their parents are looking out for them and their best interests. And children of all ages and teens, they need boundaries. They will push every boundary they have with you, but they need boundaries and they need rules. So this is just to show you that teens, they do acknowledge that their rules are reasonable and the rules are beneficial. Make the rules with them, agree the rules with them, change them up as you go along, you know, breaks, summer breaks, whatever it is and be practical and realistic with them. And that's when they're reasonable and explaining why, you know, we not being on a device late at night because of sleep and talking about sleep. They understand the importance. They may not agree with you sometimes, a lot of the time, especially in teenage years, but important to acknowledge that. So they do acknowledge it. The second thing for 13 to seven year olds that really popped out, and we shared the whole study with you if you want to read it again yourselves later, do you think social media makes each of the following better or worse for you? And if you look here at when they're on social media and the amount of time that they spend on social media, you know, they feel that their relationships with others when they're not using social is better or neither better or worse. And their overall mood is better. Quite a distinct big gap there. They, they find that is better. But if you look at the bottom, then they feel that their attention span is worse and their body image from what they're seeing online and that pressure and to conform and you know the things that they're seeing online uh, makes them more conscious of their body image and anxiety so there's this push pull between and therefore it's up to us to really ensure that we have conversations about them 
you know, if you see something online that's that's really not making you feel good, say it. That I'm going to stop following that because it just never makes me feel good anymore. You know, do a spring clean. So, you know, there are positive benefits to young people being online, especially teens in their, in, you know, in, they can't be with their friends 24-7 as much as they'd love to. So connecting with them through social media means that they are building relationships. And that's all part of growing up to building relationships, friendships and learning about their own identity and others. So while their time online on social, you may think. How much time do they need to be on Snapchat? They literally just got out of the car from each other and said goodbye and they're still talking to each other. This is the feedback from this statistics is that they feel better being connected to their friends and communicating on social, but balancing that out with, you know, too much time online. And that is just two from a pulse survey for 13 to 17 year olds from the Digital Wellness Lab. Now let's look at 15 to 22 year olds. At what age did you first start using the platform? So if, you, if you've got a child anywhere under 12 and you're looking at this, a lot of young people started when they were nine and the biggest one that they were exposed, introduced to first was YouTube. And as they got a bit older, you can see that Snapchat came in 12, 13 and uh, then Instagram as well. But you can see how it evolved over time. So young people in general introduced there's games and different things, but YouTube would have been a big one videos. And then they slowly got into the social area. And then if we look at, you know, for 15 to 22 year olds, the people that I engage with on these platforms, they really try to help me. And the bottom one is the people I engage with are there for me when I need them. So you can see here that, you know, TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, they really try to help them. They agree. There's a huge amount there of social. So it just, again, extends into that older age category as well. So while we feel that, oh, what are they doing on these social friendships, connections, that socialness, that developing relationships, and uh, camaraderie, it's all part of growing up and they need that, you know, and they're there for them when they need them, you know, and Snapchat's a big one for that from what you can see here. So this is just to show you on the other side. So you may have kids of all ages. You may have kids just under 10, 12. I, but looking at this, it should give you a good insight into young people's worlds and their, their friends are their worlds. And this is why it's important. And for us then, remember, they do find rules reasonable and beneficial to them. And we have to make those rules. You're not going to agree with a five-year-old the rules, but as they get older, you have to reasonably agree rules with them. And they're more likely then to abide by them. Okay. So there are the statistics. That's over. Let's talk about setting the rules. If you have a young person just starting out with devices. It could be a family device. It could be something you're going to give them on a, whatever you decide what device. You need to decide what device. Is it the family one? Is it your own one? You just give to them when you're with them and you slowly one-to-one -one show them. When are they allowed to use it? A lot of kids have to use devices in school and bring a device to school. But, you know, are they allowed to have it during the week? So, you know, do they do it, you know, when it's homework time? when they have a lot of activities after school as well, then it's important that you make those agreement with them. OK, so when you come home, you have to have your dinner, you have to do your homework and then you've got sports class, music class or whatever. Um, and if there's time left over, then, you know, you can have time for that. So it's about green setting the rules together as to when weekends are easier. Weeknights can be hectic. How long? So. If you look at the American Association of Pediatrics, they would say that, and we have some research there as well from the Digital Wellness Lab about, you know, any uh, under 18 months of age, you should be with them. It, it should be just with family and communication. That's it. Two to five, they say one to two hours a day, no more. And it needs to be high quality content and being with them again. Again, family time, social time, um, and watching movies together, things like that. 
And then from six on, it gets even grayer. And I know from working with teens and having teens myself who have been through the childhood phase, you know, anywhere between four and eight hours a day would be normal. They do a lot of school stuff. They do a lot of different activities online and they can spend a lot of time. Now, during the weekdays, that is significantly lower, but at weekends, it's quite high and with their friends as well. Where? So where do they? So if you have a child that's anywhere under the age of 12, you know, you need to agree a rules as part of the rules. OK, so not in your bedroom. Absolutely not. You have to be somewhere where I can see you, where I can hear what's going on and keep an eye because no matter how many safety settings are locked down on a device, there's always a risk. Nothing is 100 percent safe. There's always a risk of something happening, of inappropriate content of, you know, maybe the up, an update didn't happen to an app and then suddenly there's content in there that your child's exposed to. So keeping an eye on them. So from a young age, starting them off, these are the rules. And you will do these yourself with them if they're very young. But as they get older, it's about talking to them about those rules. And with whom? So if your friend is an, or your friend, if your child is a gamer and they love gaming with their cousins and their neighbours and their friends, you know, friends are great to, to play with, but you're only allowed to play with your friends and they get their usernames. They share each other's usernames and that's how they connect through games, whether it's Xbox or Roblox or whatever. And I did a Roblox webinar uh, in, last year in, I think it was uh, November, and the recording is there and go through the settings on that as well. It's on that web page as well, the events page. So with whom? You know, not talking to strangers, talking to them about why you can't talk to strangers, the, the dangers that are there. And if anyone contacts you, you need to tell me straight away because my job is to keep you safe. I want you to have fun, but I want you to be safe. So that relationship again, okay? So you've agreed the rules with them and they evolve as they get older, you know, especially during midterm breaks, holiday breaks, or if they're going away for a weekend, you can slightly increase them. And I will show you those screen times and how you can do it. It's worked really well for me. This is something from the Digital Wellness Lab. And for kids at a young age, what we really want to do is start teaching them slowly from a young age how to regulate their own time, being aware of their own time. There's 24 hours in a day. So getting a piece of paper and sitting down and, you know, there's 24 hours and, you know, OK, so there's this much time for sleep. This is the amount of time we need for sleep. And this is why sleep is good. And then exercise and meals and put all the time. So fill it in like a circle, like a pie chart and fill in all of that. And then, OK, so that leaves time for going to school. Homework, reading, hobbies and then, you know, relationships. So, um, you know, if there is time with family and friends, um, not so socially distanced now, but they're distanced and they're, you know, you have to have um, you have to have that contact with family and friends as well. And that's the time left over. So in the pie chart, you have all of these different pieces to 24 hours and talking to kids about that, you know, fill it up, write it down with them and then say, OK, so the time left over, there might not be much during the week. But if you have an hour, OK, then what are you going to do in that hour? What cool, good stuff can you do that's good for you? Get them into that mindset of doing quality things online. Now, quality things online can also mean, as we've seen in the stats, socializing with your friends and hanging out with your friends, that your friends are there when you need them and you need to talk to them about things. OK. So this is something that the Digital Wellness Lab came up with to help children from a young age really start helping them understand about the role of technology in your life. And they're young. It's going to take time, but we have to start somewhere. So this is the Cyber Academy. We had 35 primary school kids in this morning and getting the Cyber Academy. They're now champions. And we had 20 transition years in being trained on how to deliver the Cyber Academy. Any primary school teacher can deliver this to their kids. It's all online at that website. And they only take 20 minutes. This episode is Time Online. And it's about talking to kids about time online. 
and there's an activity sheet here and there's a fun video and there's a Kahoot quiz and it doesn't take long, but it opens up the conversation about being online, what you do online, quality and all of that. You know, what you enjoy doing online and what do you not enjoy about being online and being aware of it. This is just a piece of the video and this is the conversation guide. So there's questions and answers in there to help you with that, with your child. So if you're at home and you could play the video, it's only two, three minutes, and then you can have, have a chat with them, ask them a few questions, you know, and the answers are there. Just get that conversation going with young people. And then there's a fun quiz, you know, and there's, you could print off the activity sheet and get them to color it in and do it with them as well. And all of it is just re rehashing, just reinforcing the learning there about the importance of time online and how I spend it versus the rest of my day. It has a place. It doesn't take up the whole time because I have other things to do. When it comes to older children, one of the great things that you could do is we'll share those links out with you about the, the research and the pulse surveys. Wouldn't it be great to just sit down and ask your young persons those questions? You know, do you find rules bad, reasonable, beneficial? You know, go through them. The conversation, it opens up every step of the way and sharing with them what other young people think. You know, it's a fantastic resource. So I would recommend, you know, as they get older, whether it's something you hear on the news or whether it's a research piece or just go through some questions with them, but just having the conversation with them and listening to them. You know, and if they want more time on something, why do you want more time online? Talk to me about it, because from what I can see, it's just you could be doing something better with your time. What are you doing? So learning about why they want it and what's benefit to them. And then they understand you're listening to them. You're acknowledging them. You're trying to understand and you're trying to be practical with them. So agreeing rules with older kids as they're getting older and making those rules more flexible. And it's based on trust, trusting your young person and building that trust with them. And they'll appreciate that too. So the relationship. Listening. Sorry, just come in there. We're just doing an interpreter swap there, if that's okay. No problem. I'll, I'll stop there. Sorry, Ray. Thanks, Ella. Okay, so on the relationship side, just to summarize, the trust, the number one thing is the relationship with your child. Trust, listening, active listening, not overreacting, you know, open conversations with them. Really, really important. Seize moments as opportunities. If something great happened, if something not so great happened, just using that to get in there with them and have that conversation. And the more you talk to them about it and be with them online, the more they're going to tell you because you understand, you know. Confiscating devices is uh, something we need to be very careful of because, you know, if you take a device away from a young person, what they may hear is, well, I'm never telling them anything again because they'll just take my device away from me. And that's not what you want. You want them always to come to you. If you both agree because something's happened online and you've talked it out, let's just, will we agree to just take a break from it for a week or two or a few days or whatever and agree together? That is a better approach to this, you know? Um, you, it's when the talking stops, when the problems really start. So that's what we want to avoid. So just that relationship getting in there. And sometimes you're going to hear things you don't want to hear, but aren't you better hearing them? You know, and listening to them and being there for them. So agreeing rules together, putting some structure on it. And listening to each other, what your concerns are, what your what their concerns are, what their needs are. Focusing on quality, don't get hung up on the number of hours a day that your child is on. Remember, watching the news, listening to music, Kindle, Fitbit, the list is endless. Homework. You know, there's so many things that young people are online doing that they require the internet, just like all of us. So focus on quality when they're online. 
and encourage quality with them. Positive uses and what they care about, whatever it is that they care about, then, you know, that's a great way to get to understand your child even more or your team. Engaging with them. If if you decide to give them Snapchat, because the minimum age for Snapchat is 13. If you decide to give your child Snapchat, get on Snapchat yourself. I communicate with my daughter on Snapchat all the time. I only get yes, no, IDK, or ALR, all right, you know, acronyms I get back from her, but it's how I communicate with her, you know. Keep them busy. So instead of, will you get off that device? Instead of saying things like that, to say, well, let's turn something else on. You know they love whatever. Whatever it is they love offline. Go do that with them. Bring them away in the car. Go get a hot chocolate. Go go walk the dog. Go visit their cousin. You know, and I know that's easier said than done during a week when you're very, very busy. But it's not about turn that off. It's about turning something else on that's offline. And helping them to learn to manage time so that when we're not around, that they know themselves and they're more conscious of it. They're going to get to 18. They're going to grow up into young adults. They're going to have their device and they're going to have to manage it themselves. So our job from here until then is to train their brains, to teach them right from wrong, just like crossing the road, about device time, about quality time online, about appropriate versus inappropriate things you see about friends versus strangers and all of that thing, conversations all the time. So helping them to learn to manage their time. So we talked earlier at the very start of this webinar about you, your parenting style and the relationship you have with your device. You may feel after this that actually I'm not happy with, I'm always on my phone at mealtime or I, I tend to have my phone when we're watching a family movie or, you know, whatever it is, be conscious of it. Have a look, be mindful of your own relationship with your device, you know, and maybe together it's an opportunity to start rules now with everyone, you know, and make those rules that you're part of those rules too. So discuss the quality time and um, spending time together. Device free meal times. I can't recommend this enough. So, you know, um, when there's no device at the table, it provokes conversation and it could be how was your day? Get what's happening in everyone's day. And sometimes even having a meal time in the week can be hard with everyone going left, right and centre, doing different activities. But it's about conversation and it could be something in the news or you could bring up 25, one in four kids age six on their own smartphone. Imagine having that as a conversation. What do you think of that? You know, what do you think they're doing on it? Do you think they get into trouble or, you know, open up the conversation with them? Screen free days. This one could be tough at the start and cyber safe kids do some wonderful um, uh, events, especially in November. Uh, they have a, a turning off day where they're encouraging everyone just to switch off their device. But a screen free day, it could be one day a week or one day a month where everyone just leaves the devices and just spends time together. And, you know, it's interesting to see and the feedback that we get from so many families is it was really enjoyable. There was a bit of panic at the start, but as they eased into it, they started enjoying the screen free time and looked forward to it. So green versus screen, you know, the green time. It could be football, it could be sports, but, you know, that not turning that off, it's what can we turn on? So turning on the green and turning off the screen. Um, One thing that we would also encourage is, you know, and one of the statistics that we heard this morning was that a large percentage of 10 year olds, um, I think it was, what was it? I've got my notes here. I remember now. So 40% of 10 year olds are allowed to have their phones and their devices in their bedrooms. And this is something that we really, I can't encourage enough for you to have that conversation with kids that they are not allowed in their rooms. You don't know what's happening. You don't know who they're talking to. You don't know what's going on and for how long they're on it. Now, that can be changed with screen time, which I will show you shortly. But no devices in the bedroom and encouraging them 
and making it a rule that no devices an hour before bed. And a question that I get asked is, what about the Kindle? Well, you know, if a, if a Kindle helps relax your child and get them into sleep mode, that's great. If if a book or a Kindle wires them up and wakes them up and they're reading the book until four in the morning, then no. Because the purpose of taking switching off a device an hour before bed is to get that melatonin secreting, to get the tiredness, the yawning, and it's time for bed. My body needs sleep. And that's the purpose of this. You know, so depending on what reading does to your young person will dictate whether they're allowed to have it or not before bed. Um, and the device in the bedroom and explain to them why their mental health, their, their well-being, you know, and uh, as they get older, they will want it in their room. And then it's a different conversation with them. OK, so something that I put in here um that was uh, in the digital wellness lab as well. A young person's digital wellness is influenced by many factors beyond their screen time. And um, culture, values, family values, uh, self-esteem, and health diagnosis like ADHD or anxiety. These will affect how a young person engages online and how that affects them. And I think that's really important to be aware of. And there's been a lot of research as well around ADHD. And the most recent one is a, a few weeks ago from the Nagoya University in Japan. And they investigated screen time in children with ASD and ADHD. And they have found that there is a connection um, genetically which means that if your child is genetically predispositioned to autism or ADHD with autism, they're naturally more attracted to a device. And with ADHD, as a child gets older, they will spend more time on a device. So it's not that, and, and this is kind of myth busting as well. The screen, the device does not cause ADHD or autism, but it's genetically predisposed can't say that word. Genetically, if you have ASD or ADHD, you're more, you're a lot more inclined to use more screen time in the day. Okay, so we have that research article. If anyone is interested in looking at that as well, um, but I thought that's important to mention because you know the internet has a huge amount of benefits, particularly to people with learning difficulties and disabilities, and it supports them and it's of huge benefit to them. And sometimes I think parents that have children with uh, learning difficulties and disabilities that they feel bad that their child is on these devices for so long. But actually, there is research to show that one connects to the other. And that is most likely why. And if you if you have a young person that does not have any of these, yet they're still on it and you find it very hard and you're very concerned about them, then maybe it's something to take up with your GP and just talk to them about your concerns that you have with them that it just doesn't feel right. I can't, they just don't switch off. They're just connected and hooked in. And it could be one of the early signs as well. So I'm not an expert in this, although I, I do have ADHD in my own family. Uh, I have it myself, actually. But this is why, I, I guess, because I have it myself, I feel it's important to share with others. Um, and if you have any concerns about that, just go to your GP if you worries about it. Because it may be the reason why you're struggling with screen time is not just because of screen time. There could be things underlying as well, you know? So it's something to think about. Tech tools. Okay. Screen time tools. These are the tools that really help you manage and control what your child is on, what they're looking at, what apps they can download, you decide, how long they can be on certain apps for, and when does the entire device switch off and they can't access anything on it anymore. That's what a screen time tool will do. There are settings in all apps and games. You don't have to buy anything here. These are all built into the devices you have. The blue light, melatonin, you know, another reason that kids need to get off devices an hour before bed. Screens emit blue light and that reduces the amount of melatonin, which is the sleep hormone. So it's another good one to talk to kids about. Factual. Notifications, turning them off. You know, if you're doing your homework, notifications off. Um, do not disturb. Put that on when you're with family, having a meal, doing your homework, you know, 
putting those into the rules with your children, especially as they get older. Um, use AI. And I'm going to talk to you about that because you're all using it already. If you use Siri or Google Assistant or Alexa, you're already using artificial intelligence. OK, but it can be hugely beneficial to help you with screen time and saving time online for you as a parent, an adult um, and learning new things. So tech tools, there's so much great stuff out there. Cyber Academy, we're wearing the T-shirts myself and Leanne today. It's a, it's free. It's on our website and it's, it's 20 minutes with your kid, 11 different episodes and you know, spend some time and have some good conversations with them. Um, and the experts, we have so much really good, juicy research out there just to get lost in it for, for 20 minutes and have a look at what the experts are saying and what the recommendations are. And you form as a parent, you decide, you know your child best, you know your own parenting style, you decide what's right for them. And then you agree rules with them and grow up with them with those rules online together. So let's talk about the screen time tools, okay? So depending, you may have a mix in your home. You may have Apple, Android, or you may have Microsoft or a mix of all. Some houses are just iPhones, iPads. Some are Android, all Android, and some are a mix, okay? All devices, all devices have screen time tools in them. You just have to find them. And you can download screen time apps from the App Store. They're built into your router in your home, depending on how fancy your router is now. It depends on the router and where you live in the country and what type of Wi-Fi you have. But routers will have and can give you screen time tools. And if you have security software, then within the security software, that has screen time tools as well that you can access. You just need to find them. So go to your router see what it is. You may have to log on and set up an account and take it from there and see what services they can offer. Now, they may charge, so be careful of that. And you don't have to pay for anything because I'm going to show you iOS and Android specifically of how you can set up screen time. But they are also in mobile devices, gaming and social networks. OK, so it's really, really important to be aware of that. Screen time tools are in these settings and you can set them up to manage the amount of time that your child is online in these apps, in those games, on those devices, okay? And you can download them from the App Store. It sounds like an ad for something. Okay, so let's start looking at iOS and Android and Microsoft, okay? So the screen time tools, if we take family sharing, so. I have an iPhone. I actually need to, I had to put it on um, airplane mode because if I say here, hey, hey Siri, it'll go off. Um, with, oh, Siri is still active. Okay, power off. I'll have to power off my phone. On your own, if you have an iPhone or an iPad, if you go to the settings in this, you will see screen time. You can set up screen time for yourself. I get kicked out of Instagram if I'm longer than 15 minutes on it because I have a habit of scrolling. So it actually helps manage your own time online from that mindless scrolling. So Android is called Family Link. It's an app you download, whether you have iOS or Android. And I'll go into that a little bit more and explain it a bit better. But if your child, for example, has an Android device and you have an iPhone, you can download the Family Link to your iPhone and you can manage the screen time from your iPhone to their Android device. OK, and the same with Microsoft. They have Microsoft Family Safety and in there is the same thing. So let's look at the iPhone first. OK, so family sharing. So how do you set up screen time on iOS? This is only available from iOS to iOS, meaning you have to have an iPhone, iPad. Your, your child has to have an iPhone, an iPad, an iOS device. So it's only iOS to iOS. You cannot do anything other than that. You can't go Android to iOS. There is no app to download on the Android store, on the Google store, on the Play store for that. OK, so I'm just going to play and talk you through it. So you go into settings on your phone. This is Avril's one. You can see screen time. This is all the stuff you can see. Now I'm just going to pause it there. You can see here, Avs Mobile. 
So I spent a lot of time productivity. So I do a lot of work on my phone. So productivity, very little on social. And I have absolutely no creativity. Now, if I look at my kids, different story. Um, you have entertainment as one. I don't even have entertainment. There's no entertainment in my life on my phone. Entertainment, social, creativity. And it's categorized. And you can see how much time I've been online. So on the 6th of December, it was three hours that I was online on that particular day. And you can see down there, I spent 49 minutes on, an e on email, WhatsApp, 16 minutes, Snapchat, and so on. Okay, so this is what you can get for your kids. So just scrolling down there a little bit more, you can see the amount, you know, how much time, what I do, how I spend my time. And you can look at it for a day or for a week and you can see. This is a great thing to talk to kids about. So enter a screen time passcode, very important. And you can see here, so first of all, if your young person does not have an iCloud account, you need to create an iCloud account for them. And because they're under 16, you are their guardian and you set up their Johnny Murphy at iCloud.com, right? And then you would go in here to screen time and it'll guide you through what to do. Okay. And the apple.family, applefamily.com, it, it brings you through the whole thing as well if you're unsure, if you're getting stuck a bit, but it is very straightforward. And you set them up and you can go in here to screen time. So once you're in, so if I just go back here, maybe a little bit. Okay. So say, for example, now this is my daughter's account on my device. And I click down and you can see there's downtime, app limits. I can set app limits. The downtime is when do I not want them online? When have we agreed with the rules that they can be and cannot be online? Communication limits. You can decide who and, you know, together as they get older, who they can talk to. What are they always allowed? You know, school stuff, alarms, music, whatever, whatever you decide together. Content and privacy restrictions. That's an important one too. So I'm just going to press play and show you the rest of us. Passcode that you do not share with your child. So you can turn this on. So if you, if you, so you have to make sure that all of all the devices are on the same version. They might need an update, you know, the software updates. And then you can customize days. So if you look here, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, this, you know, 7 p.m. at night, devices off. So on a Wednesday night from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., no device. That basically means on your child's device, all the apps are grayed out. They can't open them. They can't access them. Here, you can decide, OK, let's go into social Snapchat. In Snapchat, we've agreed that only a certain amount of time they can be on Snapchat. And you can put that in for every day of the week. Maybe they're allowed a little more at the weekends. And this is so important to agree with your young person. And to talk about, you know, what they're doing online. And it may have to change but it's all opening up the conversation. So it's not about the tool as such, it's more about their behavior, their use, their activities, what they're doing online and why. You're getting to know them, they're getting to know you and they're getting it and you're getting it, okay? So communication limits as well, what's always allowed? So, you know, calculator, camera, Fitbit, music, photos, podcasts, you know, whatever it is that you can allow there, they're always allowed to access those. And then content and privacy. I really don't want them accessing stuff that I'm not comfortable with. So they're not allowed to download anything from the app store without seeking permission. And when they do that, I get a message to my phone saying, so-and-so wants XYZ app. And then opens up a whole conversation about, well, what app is that? Let's research it. What is it? What's the age rating? You know, what are the reviews saying? So these are just showing you all the different things that you can put in here. So limit adult websites. You can never allow certain websites. If you've agreed that this is a completely off, you know, totally disagree with it. You have major problems with that website and the, the content that it has and the, the value and culture, whatever the reasons are. But it's about talking to them about it, explaining it and agreeing with them. These are all the things that you can do within screen time, within settings within your own device for you, 
but you can also set up your children and connect their devices to your device. It will guide you through under screen time and it gives you that comfort. And it does and it will evolve over time. It has done for me, you know. So that is iOS family sharing. And now we're going to look at Android. So setting up a screen time tool on Android. If you are a parent or a guardian that has Android devices, you can download Google Family Link, an app to your device. And we're going to have a look at that, okay? So the beauty of this is that if you have an Android or an iPhone, it doesn't matter. You can download the Family Link app to either device and you can set it up for your child. So your child has an Android device and you have an Android or an iOS, doesn't matter, you can use Family Link. And this is what it looks like. There is the app there. And I'm just going to give you does the exact same thing as the iOS one. So continue as Avril. Okay, so I want to add a device. You click add a device and then you go, it tells you what to do. Get your child's Android device, open settings, and you go through it step by step. Content restrictions. So here are all the things that you can restrict content on. You know, require approval for all content. App games, you know. You can decide. What are the, the, Peggy is the age rating. So what is the, the European gaming age restriction that you want to put? For movies, for games, for YouTube, you can put YouTube restricted mode. Now, please bear in mind as well that try to block explicit sites. You see the word try, Google search. These are specific to the device of your child. It's not 100% safe. On this one with Google, they can just not use the app and they can go somewhere else. They can find it somewhere else. It's always about the conversation. Your child's location, turning it on. You can do that for Snapchat too. So these are really useful things to have. Privacy settings. So it's all in there. Just keep going through it. You just have to do the time. Whatever app your child needs and wants, have the conversation with them. Do the research on it. Check the age rating of the app. Check the reviews, what other parents are saying. Check with other parents. Decide together whether it's a yes or a no. And if it is a yes, download it yourself as well and go straight into settings and set it up with them. Doing all of this stuff because you're training them as well as learning yourself. OK, so that is Family Link. Now. The last one is TikTok, and I'm just checking the time, which I don't, one second. So we have three minutes left. Managing screen time on TikTok is something that, you know, you can do. I'm just going to press play. I think a lot of parents aren't aware of this, but you can restrict inappropriate videos on directly on your child's phone by doing this, going into settings and privacy, content preferences, Restricted mode, turn it on. It limits videos and you have to set a passcode that only you know when your child doesn't on their device. So they can turn it off. Other thing that you can do under settings and privacy is set up screen time well, first of all, there's reports. OK, so under the reports, you can see daily screen times. So, OK, I want daily screen time to be 40, 60, whatever minutes that you agree with your young person. And you set that with a code. And agree it. And I'm sure there'll be a lot of conversations about this because they want to extend it. But again, that's more conversation with them. Keep the conversation going. Be on it with them. You can get reports. You can set up breaks. Hey. You've been on it now for 20, 30 minutes. It's time for a break. You get that pop up on your app when you're on it. You know, you can get screen time updates every week. Hey, did you know this week you've been on TikTok for so much time? And it's a good conversation to have with them, you know. Being aware and being conscious of the time you're online and what you did online. Now, this is something different. So before I just 
The one thing with this is, so what I've just showed you is going into your child's device, straight into TikTok, going to settings and setting up with a pin the restrictions for screen time. This is where you pair their TikTok account with yours. You have to have a TikTok account on your device and they have a TikTok account on theirs. And it's called pairing, okay? So you go to settings and privacy and you can see here family pairing it's called. And it's the same thing as we've just done except now your device is connected to theirs. Who can send messages to your teen and it guides you. So family pairing, I'm the parent. Okay, so you need to scan the code links to the account and it gives you step by steps. And then your child goes into their device and goes, I'm the teen. And then they say, okay, go to your parents' device and scan the code. And then they're connected. And then you can set up all of these things. Are they public, private? You know, their privacy safety settings. Limit who can send messages to your teens. Do it together. So these are really good things that you can do with your young person. You're learning yourself and they're learning with you. And these rules will evolve as they get older. Okay. So that is TikTok. And, you know, these screen time tools, what do they do? They help you with age appropriate content. You can turn off enough purchases. They can't order or buy anything. Managing time and a lot more, you know, and you can have the monitoring, but using the monitoring to talk to them about it especially if you're worried about them. So it's available on all of these things that we just mentioned earlier. They're everywhere. They just look a bit different, but they do it. And they're in Snapchat as well. And they're in Instagram and they're on Xbox. And there's some fantastic, there's a fantastic Xbox safety app that you can download to your phone to do the exact same thing. Your child will actually message you through Xbox and say, hey, can I have 20 more minutes, please? I'm on a Fortnite game, whatever it is. So the final thing, and then we're done, right? This is something for you, right? Do you ever get, oh, I need to go to my phone to do something and suddenly it's a half an hour later. Does that happen to anyone else? Okay, so using AI for the benefit of your digital wellness, okay? Hey Siri, hey Alexa, hey Google Assist, create a shopping list, add milk to the shopping list for me. You have a shopping list in your phone. And when you get to Aldi or wherever, your shopping list, hey Siri, open my shopping list and all of the things that you told us. So you're not going into your device because it's a distraction the minute you go in. It pulls you in. Open WhatsApp. Hey Siri, open WhatsApp. Hey Siri, create send a message to so-and-so on WhatsApp. Hey Siri, any new emails? Hey Siri, send an email. Call someone. Hey, Siri, call, you know, multiply. It does a calculation for you. Hey, Siri, multiply this. Google this for me. Google that. Wake me up in two hours. Set the alarm for me. Hey, Siri, set, set a timer for, for two minutes for me. Set an alarm. Schedule an appointment, doctor's appointment into my calendar right now for this time. Hey, Siri, remind me too. So there's so many things that you can do by using artificial intelligence already in your device that can actually stop you from going to your device and getting lost in there for 20 minutes. So that's something that's valuable to you. And you can also share with your children. As they get older, they'll use it too. And it just stops them being lured in and pulled in. So you're managing your device as opposed to your device managing you. And half of the teens I work with are using screen time tools themselves. They turn off notifications. They put on do not disturb. They get that report. They restrict their own access for homework, for downtime. And it's about them learning to manage it for themselves because it's a thing for life. OK, it reduces distractions. This um, literacy skills. I mean, audio to text is fantastic if you're not great at the old spelling. Executive functioning, functioning support, you know, planning, organizing, time management. It's great to use this to help you organize and manage your day because they're crazy. They, our days are crazy. They're getting faster since COVID, I think. So that's it. Um, I've gone, I've turned off my phone so I can't see the time. I have four minutes over. This is just some of the episodes that we have at the Cyber Academy, 20 minutes. Whether you're a teacher, a parent at home, spend some time on them. We'll send you out the link. 
And Oh, very fancy, don't my slides, apologies. And these are some of the really interesting webinars that we've done in the past. One of the ones that I really recommend you watch is Tips for Setting um, Screen Time Rules. It's with Dr. Michael Rich, the pediatrician from Boston University Hospital in Boston. So that twice Boston. Excellent webinar. I've probably listened to it about 15 times. It's fantastic. If you're going for a walk, plug in the ear set and listen to it. It is fantastic. But there's lots of different ones here where we speak with the experts, we learn from the experts and we curate all of what we learn and share it with our parents and educators on these webinars for you to help you have that information that you need in your home to help safeguard your children. And it starts with us. We have to put in the time. It's not something we can outsource. I know parents that have tried it. It's backfired. Blog articles, look at these. What to do when your teen seems to prefer spending time online than with their family and real world friends. There's some great articles. So we're gonna send you that blog, those blog links. You know, it's time to move your young child away from a screen, what do you do? So it just shows you, gives you great tips on how to manage it. We'll have different challenges every day of the week when it comes to screen time. So that's the last slide here. When you hang up on me, if you decide not to stay for the Q&A, you will be directed to a feedback form, which is asking you for your feedback. If you would like to be in a draw for um, a one year maximum security, which is basically antivirus software um, to protect your device up to three, up to five devices, just put your email address into the comment box on the feedback form. Once we um, do the raffle, we delete all of the information, your contact details. We do not contact you. If you would like to stay in touch with us, then on our events page, you can see the registration form, subscribe, and you will get invites from us. Okay, so that's the events page, jamaica.com, internet safety, eventsy. And in there will be our webinar recordings. And in there will be our, um, subscribe you know subscribe button if you'd like to be notified of our next webinars okay so at this point i just want to say thank you so much i've just closed off the the slides thank you so much for joining and um uh, some of you may have to leave it's recorded so you can watch the q a later but i'm just going to go now to leanne to see Thank you, Marie. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, appreciate your feedback. I'm I'm conscious that there's a lot of questions been asked, but I was determined to finish on the hour so that, you know, we I get everything to you from tips and advice, and that we get right into the Q and A then and and get right at it, and it is recorded. Okay, so, Leanne, tell me. Yeah, lots of questions, lots of interaction. Thank you, everybody, for your questions. I've tried to answer some of the questions myself. Um, lots of questions here about YouTube. So Tara said, please address YouTube. Find my children have started watching YouTube and I'm not happy with the content that pops up. Um, let me find another one. Uh, I have a two and a five-year-old from Jennifer. I have a two and a five-year-old who both watch YouTube kids. I've set up accounts at age-appropriate settings, but I do find... For my five-year-old, there is a lot of inappropriate content coming up and I ended up blocking videos and channels and now selecting what she can watch. watch but is there still content that, but there is still content, content that's coming up that's unsuitable, so. First of all, I mean, you're doing a brilliant job by you're obviously, they're in your line of vision. You see what they're on, you don't like it. You check it, you block it, you restrict it. That's fantastic. And that's what it's all about. And there is no app that's 100 percent, even on YouTube for kids, it's like report things and they will take things down. So it's so important they're not up in their rooms or away from you. And um, what I might do is just share with you um, the YouTube one, the settings that I have here. Um, now, again, if you go in how to set up parental controls on YouTube, if you put that into Google, it says the, the, the highest search is how to bypass parental controls on YouTube. The young people are on to us, right? And that's why it's more important than ever to make sure the relationship 
is first and foremost. OK, now in the screen time tools that I showed you, you can go in and restrict YouTube to one hour a day. You can go in and put the content to clean PG or eight years old. You know, you can restrict that as well. Uh, you can put all of that in there. So screen time on a device covers all content within the device. Within YouTube itself, you can go in there and put settings like you have done, which is great. So you can double bolster. And the more, most important thing is talking to your child about this as well and explaining to them why you don't like something, how the reason why you've restricted and taken it away and what you'd like them more to be looking at. Because there's some great stuff out there, educational stuff, you know. So it's about having that conversation. So they're learning and they're listening and they're, oh, she's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I love that. I love that. I didn't. Yeah, I understand. So you're. You're explaining to them and you're reasonable and they're that conversation again, the relationship. OK, so screen time tools can help restrict access, limit access or deny access. It's up to you, you know, and don't be afraid to say no if you're not liking it. Will I put my email into the chat box? Um, sorry, I, it's popping up there now and I got distracted. Sorry, Fiona. Um, in. I would say you might just if, check. If, if Fiona's if you, Fiona's if she's signed, if she's signed up to the webinar, then we have her email and we'll send out the links afterwards. Right. And if you want to sign up for future invites to different topics that we cover, then you just have to go to the events page. So you might just send the link on the I'll event. I'll post that now. Yeah very top it says subscribe and we'll only contact you based on what you want to know about and you can unsubscribe at any time sorry about that now i'm just going to show share with you um a demonstration on youtube because this came up before as well so this is youtube app on your on a device so you can go in here manage your google account time watched so you can see here straight away you can go in and see okay what was the time watched you can put in you can see here remind me to take a break so it take a break you could say after 15 minutes you know you decide whatever it is depending on their age remind me when it's bedtime or it might be bedtime it might be like 7 p.m in the evening depending on the age of your child um and you know, when you're on a video on YouTube, it auto plays to the next one. You can turn that off so it doesn't automatically go on to the next video and the same in Netflix. So here you have general, so restricted mode. This helps hide potentially mature videos. No filter is 100 percent accurate. The setting only applies to this app on this device. So that's the YouTube app. So phone and tablet auto play next video have that off and you can do the same on Netflix because you know Netflix is Leanne who's Netflix is greatest competitor YouTube no sleep they've publicly said it themselves so when you're there at 11 o'clock at night which actually we'd have one more episode and a cup of tea you know if you go into settings and do this, not just in YouTube, but, you know, when you finish watching a video, another plays automatically. If you don't want that, you can turn that off in Netflix, go into settings. So um, that is YouTube. So that's just showing you on the YouTube app, the restrictions that you can put in. And bear in mind that I would definitely use the screen time tool. To restrict YouTube use in general. Because you can't necessarily lock these down within YouTube. You can put it on restrict mode, but kids can get around that. But the screen time tool, if they have an Android device and then you have family link, doesn't matter what device you have. And you can go in there and say, OK, for YouTube, only an hour, um, you know, restrict the amount of time, you know, or maybe you don't want them on it at all for a while. Or you, you agree with them that they're going to be off it for a while or whatever it is. But screen time tool on the device setting itself, not the app. And it literally blocks out YouTube. And you can turn off Safari and you can turn off the search engine so they can't go in that way. You know, everything gets shut down. It sounds cruel, but it's important to remember the relationship and the conversation. 
I'll just stop sharing that. I hope that was of use, that YouTube tutorial. I think it was. I think um, Tara is very happy with the answer there. Um, some some other uh, mostly upvoted questions, Avril. Um, Claire asked, how much is too much? Um, Mina asked, is there a research for the appropriate screen time a day for each age group? So people looking to find out how much screen time to allocate. So I know I mentioned, uh, and it's a good question, I know I mentioned the American Association of Pediatrics. And, you know, two to five years of age, no more than one to two hours. Absolutely no more, um, they recommend. And, and it being more family communication time, you know, like, WhatsApp calls or whatever, whatever you use to call people, but doing family things together with them on the device. As uh, that can be a challenge for some parents, kids just want to play all the time. Um, but it's about having those rules and sticking to them. Um, then you look at six upwards um, and we can send out the uh, so the pediatrics recommendations for those. Um, However, I would say to you, remember screen time is a gray area. Remember, you know, kids are using it for a lot of things. We cannot get hung up on the amount of hours they should be on. If you're asking the question, how do we know when it's too much time? Your gut instincts would tell you a lot. Your child's behavior would tell you a lot. If you feel they're not engaging with family anymore, if they're being really erratic and, and cranky and having outbursts, um, if their mood is off, they're anxious, their sleep mightn't be great, you know. Um, you know your own child and you know when something's wrong. And as parents, we're like the FBI when we need to. And I think this is play, this is time when if you feel when when is too much time, if you feel you're not comfortable with how much time they're spending online. This is where you need to take it to the next level and sit down with them and talk to them about it. And no device around. And not straight after a huge argument either. It has to be very relaxed. Calm. We need to talk to you. I want to talk to you, you know, or if you have a partner that can sit with you and talk to your child. We are really concerned and it is not the device that is our problem because it's not the device. It's the behavior of your child online and the amount of time they're spending on it and their behavior then offline towards it could be just family, you know. So what are your worries, your concerns, what you're observing? You're, you're screaming, you're, you're getting extremely you know, irritated, frustrated. You know, we're really worried about you. This is not the usual you ever since whatever, you know, whatever your gut instincts as a parent is telling you just to tell them what you see and how worried you are. And it's not the device. It's them you care about. And you, you're not confiscating the device, but you want to just look at the rules again and then ask them what's going on. This is an open conversation. We want you to always feel like you can talk to us no matter what's going on, no matter what. We want you to be able to talk to us. Um, and where are they at? Where are they at in their heads? You know, that it'll come out and you may have to probe, but acknowledging them, listening to them, not overreacting, overreact later with another grown up. But with them, thank them. Whenever they tell you something that's you can tell it's something big they're telling you from their perspective, thank them for it, because that's what we need. It's when the conversation stops and the talking stops, that's when we're in trouble. We don't know what's going on there. So get in there with them and then say, look, the sleep, you know, this is we're just, you know, so what are we going to do about this? What are we going to do? And let them come up with suggestions. You know, and keep checking in then and have those couch sit down at a table. This is serious. We love you. We will do whatever we need. 
this is what we're seeing. This is not healthy. This is not right. And we are concerned. And, you know, don't make it about the device. Don't make it about the hours. Make it about them and what's going on here. They're developing emotionally, socially. It's so much teenagers, hormones, like it's the minefield. So, you know, just open up that relationship with them and that trust and that listening and help them figure it out. You'd probably hear more than you want. Avril, it seems like you've um, set off lots of people's theories in their kitchens <laughs> during your presentation. Oh, when I said, hey, this, hey, this. so sorry, I shouldn't have. I actually had to turn my own phone off. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, let me see now. Um, okay, we've gone through YouTube. Um, I think we've looked at the screen time for Snapchat and YouTube. Um, I guess there's a few kind of questions about, you know, monitoring what kids are doing on, say, uh, TikTok um, and various other apps. Um, on that one, you can see the one that I showed you. You can watch it back in the recording afterwards. On that TikTok, what I showed you, you can see who they're talking to, who they're talking to most. You know, um, you can't see what they're talking about, but who are they mostly communicating with? You know, uh, and having that conversation with them. Listen, we're setting up. I'm allowing you TikTok. This is a big step for me as a parent. Whatever about you. I know your kids feel like they should have had it since the day they were born. But like as parents, we're like, oh, I've given them this. So get on it with them. Talk to them about it, that this is serious stuff. We need to agree rules. You're going to do the TikTok pairing. You're going to do the Snapchat pairing. You're going to do the settings with them. And this is all about trust. And, and if there's something going on online behavior, kids your child is being excluded from a group chat devastation you know if someone is being mean unkind but they can just be excluding you know things can go on that can really hurt and upset young people so it's important to get in under there and be honest and talk to them about that about kindness about being kind to others the first webinar i did back in september of this season is on there as well. Have a look at it. I go into more detail, but about kindness. It's so important to talk to them about kindness. And we all remember when someone did something kind for us, you know, and being kind to others is so important. So if you see someone being mean online or having getting a hard time, be kind to them, do something nice for them, you know. And if someone's being really hurtful and unkind to you, then it's time to talk. And oh, I can talk to my parents because they're really they sit me down enough I'm going to sit them down now and talk to them that you have that relationship um I have the snapchat tutorial just a, a quick demo on snapchat if you wanted me to show you the screen time on snapchat was there a lot of questions on snapchat there was definitely a question there about screen time on snapchat okay so this is the minimum age for tiktok snapchat most of them um this is just a very short demo on snapchat so Here we go, the cog of the wheel at the top, and then you scroll down and you go to here, Family Center. Welcome to Family Center. View your teen's friends, see who they've messaged in the last seven days and report abuse. You can't see the content of what they're saying, but who they're talking to. Now in here, learn more in the Quick Start Guide for Parents. This is a fantastic guide. It's in Snapchat, the family center, you know. And they give really great advice for parents and for users. Again, into settings, notifications, turn them all off. Kids are constantly, so Snapchat is just chatting to each other. They can disappear in, you know, 10 seconds or 24 hours. You can save them, the messages. You can delete them. Um, there are streaks, meaning if Leanne and myself are on Snapchat every day, we have to send each other a snap, like a photo, just it can be of the wall, but it's recognized as a streak. And if Leanne and myself were 
snapping each other for like two years, then we have a 700 day streak and we are like, it's, I don't know, it's all about the streak. I don't get it. I'd love if they banned streaks because, you know, young people, especially teens, they will have 70 snaps when they get home from school that they have to acknowledge and snap back in order to keep their streaks. What a waste of time. So great conversation to have with young people again. Again, here you can see all the different things going to just spend time and do the time. Do the time. Just go in there. But this is where you can set it up with them and talk to them about it. In Snapchat. I hope that helped. Couple Thanks. of other questions here, um, Avril, about workarounds that kids are finding to work around the Family Link app. And oh, there's another question about a kid who found a workaround for the iPhone app as well. Yeah, I wouldn't allow clock to be always allowed because they go in there and change the time. That's one of them. But again, I would say if your child has found ways around hacking in, you need there's a bigger conversation here. Your child could be a little tech genius and maybe acknowledging their smartness and how while you're upset that they're bypassing your rules that you've agreed, they're really smart. What are they interested in? Coding, hacking, ethical hacking get them involved in things that they're really naturally good at. It could be their future career. If you're naturally good at something, I said it to the teens this morning, find out what you're naturally good at because you'll never work a day in your life if you match that with a job. You know, so uh, if, you're, if your kids are, are doing things like that, find out how they did it, ask them. What a great way to have a conversation. Show me what you did. I just... I'm not impressed. I'm impressed, but I'm not impressed as a parent, but I'm impressed as a the fact that you did it like, you know, but there are ways around everything. You know, but the key here is that you're training their brain. They're going to get to 18 and get older and have to figure it out for themselves. So get their young, get them young, get them trained, appropriate and appropriate time. How much time reminders, get them to log off, mindless scrolling. That does nothing for nobody. You know, have those conversations with them at the device-free mealtime. Thanks, Alina. Um, okay, question here about gaming, and it's very hard to ask a 15-year-old to get off, and then a 13-year-old boy asking for Grand Theft Auto as all his friends are playing it, and a good few comments on being the last parents to allow certain access. There was a fortnight question as well. Anything around that, April? Okay, so I would say, first of all, check in with the, your child's parents, your child's friend's parents. Because, first of all, I'm not, I'm not saying they're liars, but, you know, they all have it, and I have it. I'm the last not to have it. You know, if you check in with your child's friend's parents, maybe they don't. But if they do, then talk to them about, well, how long are they on it? What do they do? Like, do you have settings down? I'm worried about it. Like, who are they talking to? How are you? And learn from them about what they're doing with their child. You might be pleasantly surprised or you might be just, oh, you know. So it's about this is a great way to get other parents involved. The children that play with yours agree rules together as parents, you know, Um. You can have, they can set up on Fortnite. They they meet at eight o'clock on a Thursday night, the whole class, and they play Fortnite together and they love it. And it's their time, eight to nine on a certain night of the week. Like there's some great ways. And gaming is a social media network as well. It's where young people like to hang out, you know, and we can't forget that. And remember what I showed you at the start. They feel really supported by their friends. They build relationships online, whether it's Snapchat, Roblox, Fortnite. Now, Grand Theft Auto, if your child is on Grand, wants Grand Theft Auto and they're 13, so I would, there's a number of things you could do, right? But the sitting them down one, talk to the parents first of his friends to, to validate if they really are on it and find out more because there are a lot of restrictions and settings that you can put on that. 
But Grand Theft Auto is 18 for a reason. There is some horrendous scenes in it. So talk to the parents. And then I would sit your child, your young person down and talk to them about all the concerns you have about it. You can list them out. Common Sense Media. We did a gaming uh, webinar before Christmas. It's all up there, the, re the recording on our uh, events page, events IE. And, you know, it gives a lot of information about Grand Theft Auto, Roblox and Fortnite and all of those. But, you know, you have to start somewhere. Definitely not Grand Theft Auto. Minecraft is brilliant. That's on the school curriculum in the Nordics. Roblox is great. Settings again, remember. It's agreeing rules together, agreeing times. And then I would say with your child, with the Grand Theft Auto, sitting them down, listing out all the worries that you have and why you worry about them, because you're their parent. And that's your job. And remember, they know it's reasonable and they know these rules are beneficial to look after them. You know, so I would say you have to be a bit of an investigator there with the parents of the, your child's friends and then sit them down and talk to them. And if you decide no and all the other kids have it. So be it. You're the parent and you decide the well-being of your child. And uh, are we as a nation afraid to say no to our kids? I fear sometimes we may be. And it's OK. But I think where you will give yourself comfort is by sitting them down and telling them, explaining to them why and let them try and convince you. of Otherwise. Maybe they will. Sometimes it's about compromise. But if you're very strong about this, then stick with the no and just stay with it. It's OK as a parent to say no. Thanks, Estelle. Okay, um, a couple more questions. Have we still got time, Avril? Um, I'm just conscious of poor Ella and, and Ray. I, I don't know if... Are you exhausted? Um, and yourself, Leah? Are you... Would we, would we do one more question? Okay. Pick a nice see one now, Leah. <laughs> um, so we've talked about competing with other households, parents... Uh, you know, the kids uh, talking to the other kids' parents. Um, what about something positive? There's a question here about a recommended websites online that are educational. Um, and there's another question. Um, there's a few questions about TV. Is, is TV screen time too? TV, every anything that connects to the the old internet is TV is screen time, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So I love whoever asked that question about what are the good things to do online. Like what are they? So um, uh, what I'll do is we'll send out those links in the the email that you'll get in a week's time. Now I'm sorry about that, but you know, um, MOOCs, M O O C, massive online open courses for adults, for grown ups. These are free online courses in whatever. Like Leanne, you could qualify to be like a landscape gardener between now and Christmas online. You know, there are so many courses out there. We can change our careers from the couch at home. They're from Harvard. They're from MIT. There are some amazing courses all around the world. OK, the Can Academy, K-H-A-N, Can Academy. Some of you may be familiar with this for school, for subjects. You know, if your kids are struggling with maths, then you just put in the exact problem, the exact age of the child. And, you know, you'll get really simplified visuals of how to explain it and little videos. But Khan Academy has also got some cool content in there for young people. And, you know, I know we say YouTube is a, is a, is a place where you have your question marks and concerns. But like learning how to set up Sign, Irish sign language on a Zoom webinar with the new feature. I went into YouTube to figure that one out with our training guys here. And uh, let's just say Zoom ain't ready yet for sign language. They're getting there. They're making progress, but it ain't there yet. So I used YouTube to learn about something. So if your young person is learning how to code and they want to learn about a new language, YouTube can teach them how to code, you know, um, how to make a movie. 
So what's your story? Doctrinemicro.ie. We run a video competition. Does your young person like making videos? We launch again. Not now. We announced the winners today, but we've six thousand euros in cash prizes to give away. Get them involved in making a video when we announce it and launch it again. You know, uh, so that's what's your story, Dr. Micro. E. Um, so video competitions, art competitions, online art competitions, blogs, blog competitions. Does your young person like writing? Blogs. Get them to set up a blog. And it's clothes just for them. And they can write away from when they're seven to when they're 77, 107. And they may publish it someday and it'll be a book. Blog articles, um, YouTube tutorials on how to improve your swimming technique, how to play a song on a guitar, how to whatever it is, what, whatever it is that you want to learn. Um, but the Can Academy, Allison.com, MOOCs, um, YouTube has some excellent tutorials, but it's about navigating them. So that guy that hacked the screen time, your child that, that navigated around the screen time rules. This is where you could Coder Dojo is a fantastic club to get kids involved in coding. And there's hackathons. Sorry, and Avril, could you just repeat what was the best for the name of the app again? Yes. Of the so, course. Alison.com. And then Can Academy, K-H-A-N, Can Academy. And what was it? MOOC, M-O-O-C. It's mind blowing the stuff out there. And, and then what's your story? Tremicro.ie. And um, Coder Dojo. Dojo is a temple. Kids learning to code. Coding is a language, just like French, Spanish, German. And if they love coding, their brains are like sponges at a young age. You could get them coding and this could be their thing, you know, so or researching, whatever it is. So and kids don't have to wait to finish secondary school to go to college. They can do this all online. They can do taster courses during Easter. They can do taster courses for uh, any time of the year. And learn so much and decide that's what I want to do when I get older and grow up. They don't have to wait for college anymore. These courses are all online waiting for them. So what is it your child likes? Google. Search it up. You'll be amazed at what you find. Groups for your children to join and, you know, have the same interests and hobbies. So I think, I hope that answers that question. Um... And thank you, everyone, for joining. Um, we're on it an hour and a half. I hope we've answered the majority of the questions that we've asked. I know there was a lot of questions in there. Um, thank you, Ray. Thank you, Ella. Leanne, you lost without you. I, I can't multitask and read. And I got distracted once. Did you see that? Like I got all, went all wrong over it. So thank you so much, Leanne. This will be recorded. And it will be up on the Eventsy page, just like the other two previous webinars. Have a look at them, gaming and internet safety. And we will be sending you an email in the next five to seven days with the webinar recording and all those links as well, so that you can have a look at those as well. Thank you again. I know it's safe for internet day, but it can't be just be for one day of the year. It has to keep the conversation going every other day of the year with people in your community. Share the recording with family and friends. Just get it out there. We need to look after each other. So thank you. Take care. And we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>